the Tekken 8 bait has come and gone and I've had some time to think over how the weekend went, what felt good and what felt not so good. Off the rip there are a few quality of life changes coming from Tekken 7, like ultra wide support, fast load times, throw breaks in the move list and frame data being available by default and not DLC. These are all nice changes that respect a player's time more in the game. But how did the game actually feel to play, particularly with the new heat mechanic? The heat system seems to be quite polarizing, but personally I'm a fan of it. It seems to be the meta in modern fighting game development to have these universal get off me moves, but I'm not against them. As a new player, you have a button to help you relieve pressure and not be overwhelmed, and as you improve to higher levels, they add to the mental stack as they can be baited out and punished, which uh, increases the complexity of the mind games that fighting games are famous for. After a few games playing with it, you get used to the ebb and flow that heat brings to gameplay, and it doesn't feel foreign for long. I only played with Azu Senna during my time, as I was under the impression that she's meant to be close to Josie, who I play in Tekken 7. I definitely enjoyed Azu Senna. She may still move from other characters, but she still has her own flair and personality about her. However, I do not think she replaces the Josie playstyle. I miss my plus frames on down 4 and crouch dash 3 too much, and I'll probably end up learning Brian for those kind of oppressive kickboxing moves. Now one negative that could not be ignored was the amount of connection issues and laggy gameplay. When a game was bad, it was bad. It felt like you're playing at a lower frame rate, even if the FPS counter shows 60. Now the devs said that this can happen when the opponent is on PC and they're struggling to run the game, but even after using the responsive sync for rollback and playing against other console players, these games would still happen. The quality of games playing Street Fighter 6 and this beta is night and day. I know it might not be fair to compare Tekken's netcode to a 2D game, but that's what the competition is at the moment. I hope they get the data they need from this test to make some improvements before release, because when these games run well, they are a joy to play. The Bayer also showcased the Fight Lounge, which I won't lie, seems a bit rushed, probably just in response to Street Fighter 6 and their avatar system. Even though these avatars aren't that complex, hopping into a lounge would instantly half my FPS, so some optimization may be needed there. I still think it's better than nothing though. It's good that you can hop into a lobby, ask people for a set without having to use external socials like Discord. I don't have any friends that got the beta to test out how accurate the ghost feature is, but from what I hear, they are impressive so far. Tekken Ball and Tekken Force have also been confirmed, but were not available to play in the beta. Character customization was also missing, but a recent IGN video showed some nice options for the characters. All in all, this beta made me more hyped for Tekken 8's release than watching any trailer or gameplay ever did. It's shaping up to be a nice full package compared to 7, and I hope they can iron out the netcode issues the best they can before launch. So those are my quick thoughts on Tekken 8 so far, you know what to do if you liked it, thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.